hit the recording button in, so, in case it like runs immediately. So. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Ugh. Hello, mis yelitos, and welcome back. Coco and Moon are here, and we are continuing Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright. Mr. Cantabella. Would like to apologize for putting too much pressure on your daughter. And why don't you apologize directly to Aspella? She's not really listening right now. Oh, Only your words can bring her back from the brink of madness. Let her hear the truth from her own father. I mean, I'd say it's his fault. Because... He, he's the one who brought the bell up from the depths. <laughs> All according to your plan, Leighton. Driven a spell into a corner in order to push me to the wall. Yep. I had no other choice. Spella, please listen to me. You haven't done anything wrong. You didn't cause that accident. You have suffered so much, thinking that you were Bazella. Take the blame for that. Why did you do that in the first place, you fucking weirdo? You, Mr. Catabella? I sacrificed everything to make up for what I've done. But all I managed to do was inflict more pain upon others. Is that not so, Dark Law? That you are willing to talk, Mr. Cantabella. Would you mind telling us your story? Yours, as well as Aspella's and Miss Darklaw's. Very well. The story, too, began when I was a young lad. When Newton and I were still youth. Full of dreams and hope. As you already know, we discovered the underground ruins. Deep within them lay that accursed bell. The bell of ruin. At the time, we still lacked the knowledge to decipher any of the writings we found there. For Leighton, translate them immediately. This bell is magnificent. It's bound to make the most beautiful sound. I have an idea. Why don't we make this bell the symbol of our town? How do you propose to do that? Let's build a bell tower for it. And we can ring it on special occasions. Hmm, that's not a bad idea. And it's settled. When we grow up, let's do it. Okay, just don't forget about it. Two of us chose different paths in life. I studied management in London, while Newton devoted himself to the study of natural sciences. And then you made a fortune following the invention of a new anesthetic. We both got married around that time. And each of us had a daughter. You mean Espella was born shortly after your company gained funding? That's right. We eventually returned to our hometown and set about realizing our childhood dream. We built the bell tower in the middle of the town square. We retrieved the bell itself from the underground ruins. We aspired to make it a symbol of prosperity for this un unindustrialized town. The bell was to be officially displayed during the annual fire festival. We rung in the morning following the night of celebration. Pardon the interruption, but at the time were you aware of the meaning behind the bell's name? Obviously we were not. Thinking back to my ignorance at the time, a chill now runs down my spine. 
Newton and I went to the bell tower the day before the festival. Only one more day to go. We've waited a long time for this. That we have. This town will no longer be the same after tomorrow. The bell weighed so much that ringing it was not easy. We tackled that problem by constructing a special mechanism, which we installed in the belfry. Bella, who was there with us, was utterly enchanted by the bell. She wasn't a bad child, but she was very stubborn and would rarely listen to me when she wanted something. I told her a story to try and convince her to leave the bell alone. Espella, listen carefully. You mustn't ring this bell. But why? Why can't I, Daddy? You know about Bazella, the witch. Uh-huh. She's an evil fire witch who uses magic to hurt people. If you ring the spell, Bazella will come out and possess you. <sighs> possess me? You mean I'll turn into Bazella? That's right, Espella. When Bazella possesses someone, she uses them to do terrible things. This is the worst kind of parent. That's why you must never rip the spell, sweetheart. I'm also just confused because since at this point he doesn't know what's up with the bell, yeah, he why just doesn't he... want. It, it, this is the type of parent who's like, uh, they don't have a good reason, or they're not good at disciplining their child. Like, like, and I don't mean disciplining, like hurting their kid. I mean setting boundaries with their kid. But they make up stupid reasons, like the police will come get you. <laughs> or, uh, that'll kill someone, you know, like that? Like, yeah. they make up stuff that has gravity but no meaning, and so it freaks the kid out. Like, this is what he's yeah. doing. And it's bad parenting. He's like, if, 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 if it was an ordinary bell tower, then obviously you don't want the kid being around those sort of gears. But then why fucking give them the pendants that make it work? <laughs> See, that's the thing, is maybe they didn't realize that they had them, but that doesn't make any sense because they're clearly displayed in the photo. So it's mm -hmm. like, it, it's it's all nonsense. It's contrived it writing. <laughs> yes, and that's why this this half of the game is like me making like pulling my hair out because it's like it could have been so good. Why'd you do this? Now you know the pain I've been suffering all these years. Uh, the legend of Bazella has been passed around these parts for centuries. It probably originated from beliefs of the tribes that populated this area in the past. But I told Espella, big fat lie. It was just a silly story that I invented for the occasion. It's not silly when you're like, yeah, you'll get possessed by the ghost of this evil person. And do terrible things. And do terrible things. Like, damn. It was only meant to stop her from ringing the bell. I could not have imagined that it would have such far-reaching consequences. And we're back to normal now. Thank fucking god, I hate that shit. <laughs> it's all coming back to me now. I remember that day. Yay! On the day of the fire festival. Just around the time when the preparations ended, and everything was about to begin. I sneaked out of our house. I took a mum's pendant with me. Oh, okay, so it was the mother's. But then why was it in the picture? <laughs> probably because the mom's... <laughs> okay, so here's just the theory. They're probably going to debunk it. Okay, but like, the... I used to wear my mom's jewelry sometimes, so maybe the... Like, the kid being like, oh, mommy, mommy, can I wear it? You know, and, okay. and like a photo op, since obviously the other mom probably had the other one, the two girls mm -hmm, wearing mm -hmm. it makes sense. Okay, that's, that's fair. That's fair. Yes, it belonged to my mom. We needed to limit access to the bell, so we made the two keys. We decided to make them independent, and each gave one to our respective well, that's wives. You. Coco says, bless you, Scott. 
Both are needed in order to access the Belfry. I saw you and Mr. Belduk use them. So I told Eve to meet me at the bell tower. Daddy says Bazella will come out if I ring the bell, but if I do it just a little... I want to try it while the festival is going on. I hope Eve doesn't forget her mum's pendant. <sighs> Though it was just as I thought, Miss Darklaw. You are Mr. Bell Duke's daughter. <laughs> well done, Inquisitor. I was almost afraid you would fail to make that connection. What in the- This is too much for one day! Yeah, you're right though. <laughs> Where'd the kitty go? What the fuck? Eve ate Eve. Ah, no! Uh, order in the court. Lady Darkla, you mean to say that you're Sir Belduk's daughter? Yes. My real name is Eve Belduk. I'm the alchemist's daughter. Th this is unbelievable. I also sneaked out of my house that evening, touching my mother's pendant in my hand. I did just as you asked me to, did I not, Isbella? Isbella, my mom's going to be so angry if she notices I took the pendant. Don't worry so much, I just really want to ring that bell. I want to hear it. God, if he'd done it to humor his daughter, things could have been averted. Huh. Oh no, I'm passing out. I drank oh. groundwater. <laughs> I rang the bell against my father's warning. And so, Bazella possessed me. Because of me, the town, and everyone in it. Here it comes again. Yeah! <laughs> They're all gone. No, it's not your fault! Stop blaming yourself! Supposedly, the former inhabitants of this area also used to fall unconscious upon the sound of that bell. Perhaps they experienced a similar nightmare. It was I who brought the bell of ruin into this town. But also, you could have just melted it down, people from a million years ago. The one to blame for this calamity is not some witch, it's me. I brought destruction upon this town. I am Azella. Aspella, you're going to drive your dad crazy if you keep repeating that. <laughs> Seeing you like this, it's giving me a strong feeling of deja vu. Eve. How can you be so evil? Are you happy now? I'm afraid we're in the dark as regards... We're in the dark as regards Miss Starklaw's sense of deja vu. Only four people survived the fire. Only four? Spella and Eve were in the Belfry. And the only two residents did not participate in the festival, Newton and I. Where were you at the time, if you permit my asking? Making out in the cornfield. <laughs> we were investigating those fateful ruins. That's why we didn't notice anything until it was too late. It was getting near the time at which we planned to ring the bell, so we headed towards the town. 
and we saw it. The town had been burnt to ashes, the air shimmering. Awful for words. We searched for survivors, sick with anxiety. Eventually, we found our daughters in the bell tower. Spella was unresponsive, like a doll. Eve was crying at her side. Her relief at having found them vied with terror caused by the disaster. The worst night of my life ended, pierced with the first rays of sunshine. But then... It seemed Espella was already lost to us. We had lost her to Bazella. She wouldn't speak, eat, or even leave her room. She thought she was Bazella, and that she had destroyed the town. I couldn't get that out of her head she saw from the bell tower must have been so terrifying. She wasn't shocked from what she had seen. My own words had put, in her, had put her in that state. No, it's PTSD. That's a coping mechanism. But I only not told her that stupid story. Yeah, you're a shitty parent. He had been grasping at straws, trying to find a way to save Espella's mind. But... Whatever we did, her eyes would remain impassive and empty. It did, uh... Did, uh... Did you try a therapist? Uh, just, no! Uh, Therapy is what? for wimps! <laughs> God. <laughs> what he is... <laughs> this is why he's the worst, Dad. In the end, I came upon a certain idea that offered a glimpse of hope. <laughs> Brainwashing! <laughs> What was it? That suspense is too much for my aging heart! Manfred von Karma would look at this guy and be like, Ugh. <laughs> Manfred von Karma, a better parent? Not very likely, um, but kind no, of. But smarter. <laughs> smarter. Certainly smarter. I believe I may know what it was. It was the only way to get through to Little Espella. Okay, so we're gonna have to present this storybook? Jesus. <laughs> Inquisition, what are you talking about? What was Mr. Cantabella's idea for saving his daughter from insanity? The suicide note from Beldu, obviously. <laughs> anyway, presenting the first story. <laughs> <laughs> he went to the future and got that. <laughs> We discovered this in Espella's room. Um, and that is... It's a handmade picture book. The illustrations and handwriting are truly exquisite. That's the first story I wrote. I made it for Espella after that dreadful fire. Oh, the storyteller's first story. It was but a simple children's mm, let me story. See. Oh, especially <laughs> vampires. Oh my. Oh no. I choose the vampire or the werewolf. I need oh to no. Know. <laughs> <laughs> Plot was very straightforward. Townsfolk joined forces to banish evil witches who serve Bazella. Miss Bella, do you understand now? You aren't Bazella. Bazella is somewhere out there, sending out other witches to do bad things to the people of our town. Witches, magic, the town, perishing in flames. Espella was mentally broken, and I couldn't get through to her in any other way. I talked to her as if magic and witches were real, avoiding any mention of that fire. Bella spoke to me for the first time in so many days. I was beyond I was beyond myself with joy and replied without thinking. Oh yes they are. They're hiding in the town, among the people. But it's just a fairy tale. 
I was desperate. Yet she would close herself off to me again. Now, in hindsight, I see what an utter fool I was. I made an irreversible mistake yet again. No, it's not. Everything your daddy writes comes true. The bad witches will get their comeuppance. I will write a story about it. And so I wrote another story for my daughter. A story about mischievous witches getting caught. The time I had the story acted out in front of her. You had it acted out? Back then, I wasn't the only one tormenting myself over the mental state of my daughter. Newton was going through hell, too. His own daughter had been badly scarred by the event. Isn't that right, Eve? My father and I repaired a building that had survived the fire and continued to live in this town. Espella wasn't even able to leave her room. We couldn't leave her behind, but she needed all the help we could get. Mr. Cantabella showed us this book one day. Then, he made an unusual request of us. I'd like to make this story real. Would you be willing to help me do so? To our surprise, he was entirely serious. Seeing that, he gladly offered our help. story about evil doing witches getting caught and punished and Bazella the source of them all were you paying attention Aspella? witches got what they deserved and peace has been restored to the town Aspella smiled at the end then she whispered to herself When I saw her smile, I felt as if something broke inside me. Couldn't afford to let her be sad again. Maybe if Bazella were to exist in this town, Spella would stop thinking she herself harbored the Great Witch. I continued writing stories about witches. Even I would act them out for her, Spella. And gradually, the number of characters in my stories increased. That was, of course, largely due to the ongoing reconstruction of the town. How much reconstruction? It wasn't anything on a big scale. I simply paid people to move in and act out their roles. But I began to think that I would need more than that. The story had to be real. To make a lie seem true, you resorted to even more lies. Bro, you could have saved so much money and just gotten her a goddamn therapist. Yes, I was certain. What? Therapy. <laughs> yes, I was certain that was the only way. How did I do so? I remembered about Newton's research. He was working on a certain medicine. It was a kind of tranquilizer made from local plants that he was testing at the time. It was difficult to put into practical use. The substance had a danger of causing unconsciousness and gnosis. I can see how that could be abused to cause much harm, supposing it fell into the wrong hands. Such as yours! Such as yours! <laughs> at the same time, it was just what I needed for my ambitious project. Contacted the government. Gladly gave me the rights to do it. And that was the beginning of what came to be known as Project Labyrinthia. A town with human test subjects, all in a state of long term hypnosis. You devise that plan solely for the sake of your daughter. Oh, you are such a noble soul. Why, <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, wait, you're being sarcastic! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes. 
We acquired the land which had been laid to waste by the fire. The new town was slowly becoming populated. Gradually, the rules of Labyrinthia were established. It was to be a town where magic and witches were a reality to the residents. All of this was possible thanks to the drug. The test subjects were exposed to it. Through the ink used, in, <laughs> used to pen the story, right? That's right. It was the dangerous drug developed <laughs> by Newton. Thanks, man. <laughs> About ten years have passed since then. Even now, the town continues to change. No wonder Belduke was, like, absolutely fraught with, like... Guilt. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is majorly fucked up. This guy... Oof. Mm-hmm. Project Labyrinthia. All this was done for one girl. Spella was only able to be herself when she lived within my story. Oh, the irony of it. Only within a world in which Bizella was real could a Spella's tragic memories be sealed. I'm gonna hit you with the baseball bat. You're stupid as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> all this time, all this while. Eve was assisting me. Yeah, you basically groomed a child in, uh, into the position of faking this. Like, like, also, fuck her dad as well. Like, aside from, like, like, him being racked with guilt, he put his daughter in this position too? What the yep. fuck? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was the first shade. Gasp. I mean, yeah, we knew that. As soon as the story began, I disappeared from the scene. Miss Bella was to see some magic. And someone had to don this robe. That's the robe of invisibility! I gave Miss Bella new memories so that she could live in this town with everyone else. I also sealed the memory of her friend, Eve. Yay, what? you took her only friend away. And gave her a cat, even though cats are great. What the fuck? <laughs> also, you took her only friend away and made her literally invisible. What is wrong with you? <laughs> My existence was too strongly connected to her memory of the fire. Afterwards, I returned as Darklaw, a stranger to Aspella. But... but even if you were just doing this for a spell's sake, this is just going too far. Y yeah, you fucking think? <laughs> Only now are you screaming this? <laughs> I made that choice. I do not regret the past ten years. Ma'am, you were in no position to make that choice. <laughs> Meanwhile, my father was supporting Labyrinthia from behind the scenes, in his own way. Making horrible drugs that hypnotized people. You mean his contributions as an alchemist. My father's knowledge of medicine was indispensable for this town to function. The hallucinogenic ink was my father's work as well. So it was. Newton and Eve sacrificed more than anyone else for the sake of Espella and this town. I will be forever indebted to them. We wanted to save Aspella, just like you. But then... There's still something I don't understand. Why were you trying to destroy this fake world? In the end, you chose to betray Aspella and Mr. Cantabella. No! Betray is a weird word. Yeah, betray is not the right word. It's... You decided to shatter the illusion. Jesus. Mm. That oh. should have been done years ago, a decade yeah. ago. <laughs> Literally, uh, again, something she didn't have a choice in. Oh, but I've already told you, have I not? It was your revenge against Mr. Cantabella for choosing to end the story, correct? I wonder whether that was the true reason. P professor
Would a Miss Belduke really betray them merely because she did not want the story to end? I dare say there was another, considerably more important reason. She had another reason? No need to frown in dismay, Mr. Wright. Please, leave this with me. I won't present the wrong evidence again. Mm. <laughs> but he loved it so much when you did. <laughs> It would so be, happy. like, ten years worth of Christmas gifts if you did again. <laughs> <laughs> Especially, god, yeah, just, oh my god. <sighs> well then, let's hear what the Inquisition has to say. Uh... <laughs> what other reason led the witness to betray Mr. Cantabella? I would think a speller. But we haven't used the suicide note yet, so I'm, I'm a little worried. <laughs> Pretty sure it's a suicide note, yeah. Okay. Have a look. This letter was Ms. Belduke's real motive. W what is this? I think I've seen it before. That's the letter written by Mr. Belduke for Mr. Cantabella. It's also Mr. Belduke's suicide note. You can do his work. My dear friend. I hope you can forgive me for this <laughs> well out of my own will. No. <laughs> what I have done cannot be forgiven. I can never escape from it. <laughs> you know what this feels like? What? This feels like the Fata Morgana of Professor Layton games. <laughs> Oh, how dare you insult no, no, Fata Morgana? No, 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 the reason why is because it's so fucked up and sad. It's just uh. really layers of fucking disastrously sad death. And it's like, <laughs> ooh, hurts a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Something was tormenting Mr. Bowduke. It became too much for him to bear, and drove him to suicide. These past ten years, I thought Father was glad to be helping Cantabella. But little did I know, he was suffering terrible anguish all that time. Gasp. I think this might be dark world. Antebella twisted the lives of so many people for the sake of his daughter. It was a story not but a glorified lie, stripping so many of what little happiness they had. All those years, father was racked by a crushing sense of guilt. His agony culminated in the incident of three months ago. Mr. Belkus, death. So yeah, how did no one like bump into this thing in all those years? <laughs> I I'm pretty sure they probably did, but because they were brainwashed not to notice it, it was just a matter of that. You just find a line of vill villagers, like, unconscious with, like, bloody yeah. foreheads. Oh my god, that would be so fucking funny. One of the kids runs full tilt into it. <laughs> Holy shit. Again, still freaked out that those children were probably born there. <sighs> Before Labyrinthia was created, certain things had to be concealed in order to seal this fella's memories. Had she seen them, she would have remembered. They were simply too dangerous to her. One of them was me. 
Bella's friend Eve had to be reborn as a shade and disappear into the forest. The next thing was the bell tower. I see. Had she seen it, it would have been certain to stir up those traumatic memories. Memories of the legendary fire. The only way to prevent that was to erase the bell tower from Labyrinthia. But how could you do that? Using the same method as with this robe. A robe of invisibility. But yeah, literally a shrouded building. The entire time people run the fuck into <laughs> it. <laughs> In short, we covered up the tower with a huge robe. Oh, that's why it revealed like that, because the lightning hit it and burnt yeah, it down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that part made sense to me, but I just don't get how not a single person in all those years was like, something weird is here. <laughs> just fucking whaps my whole body into that thing. <laughs> Trying to trying to cut across the square to go to my friend's house. Ooh! Oh, what the fuck was that? Witches! Oh my god! <laughs> you know what? That's probably why. Probably the closest thing we can just say. Everyone's just like, evil, <laughs> evil. <laughs> Although it wasn't as easy as it sounds. In other words, the bell tower had been there all this time. Only, the townspeople couldn't see it. Is that correct? Indeed. I, I, I don't know what to say. At any rate, the situation changed due to that lightning strike three months ago. Did it not? It was a most unfortunate accident. Those lightning set the bell tower's cover on fire. Whee! That cover was quickly consumed by flames, revealing that abominable bell tower. Somehow it didn't burn down, regardless. <laughs> Though it's partially made of wood. The beginning of all this, the bell of ruin appeared before us. Twas a mockery of our efforts. The tower emerging from the flames... ...must have seemed like a sign of divine anger to Mr. Belduke. Y'all shouldn't have been walking around in a lightning storm anyway. <laughs> You're just tempting fate. <laughs> that no matter how you attempt to conceal your sins, the truth will eventually float up to the surface. Having realized this, Father chose death. Looks off into the middle distance. Edgeworth. <laughs> You're such a kind-hearted man. Are you sure about that? I don't think either of you were very nice people. <laughs> he didn't have an inkling of what he had been going through. I, I know, because you're a guiltless freak. <laughs> To him, the participation of Labyrinthia's people within this project was not voluntary. Even though they had themselves signed the contract, I believe he felt those people were being deceived. They were. Father took his life because of you, Cantabella. Nobody can really argue with that. Now you know why I did what I did. I lost my father three months ago. That day my revenge began. Your revenge. First step of my plan was to rewrite the story. What, what did you say? As president of Labrellum Inc., you had to spend most of your time in London. 
Over the past few years, you were coming to Labyrinthia only for parades. So naturally, I knew you would never notice if the story were, were slightly changed. That explains it. I couldn't help thinking there was something strange going on. Mr. Cantabella is Espella's father, after all. He wouldn't have made Espella a witch in his story. Espella was... A witch? When did that happen? Wow, you really don't read back in your... Stuff. <laughs> get good oh, on your I lore. <laughs> I can't. I can't fucking believe. Get get good on your lore, man. <laughs> How could you have known, after all? Let me fill you in on the details. A spella has already been tried once within the witch's court. Impossible. Why? How could you? You knew the risk that it would carry. Look at you. What a fine author of what a grand of that grand story you are. You left all the work in Labyrinthia to me. Meanwhile, you were making millions for yourself in London. What a pathetic excuse for a father. You didn't even notice that your precious little Espella was in such danger. Would you say Coco? Oh, him out. Oh, yeah. him out. Fucking get him. Ugh. Miss Belduke. Why did you do that to Espella? Do you even need to ask? I did it to unlock her memories. You mean... When the legendary fire took place, Espella was so traumatized that she closed herself off to the world. We were just little girls then. That tragic accident was too much for us to handle. I'll stop that. Listen with your goddamn ears. <laughs> this fictitious town was created as a facade to keep the truth away from Espella. But the weight of all these lies led my father to his suicide. And, she, and literally, Darkwell had to live with this. She was mm -hmm. also traumatized by this. Despite that, the person responsible for all this carried on as if nothing had happened. I couldn't forgive him. It's Belduke's bereaved daughter. I had to have my revenge against both Cantabellas. Judge, this is the whole truth. Now you know the true identity of Bazella. Objection. I objecting. You say this is the whole truth, but is that really the case? Professor? What are you going on about now? We have been provided with a clear picture of what happened to Espella so long ago. Nevertheless... We haven't yet heard your testimony. Don't be ridiculous. This will be the last testimony in this trial. Tell us about the night of the legendary fire. I request that you tell us your story. Who do you think you are, Inquisitor? Running around leaving scars. I'm merely one of the supporting you, characters. You made me this tale. almost fall out of my chair. Did you hear that? Like, <laughs> that was me try uh, like trying not to like lose balance on my uh, the arms of my chair. <laughs> However, I am very much interested in the truth. This has been a very long trial, of which this shall be. A the last interrogation. Court demands that the single other witness of the legendary fire provide us with her testimony. Ah, <sighs> very well. We'll have to see it next time, though. 
Well then, thank you all very much for joining us. And as always, please take care of yourselves and each other. Bye-bye.